Super welcome back. And as I said, it's late at night, so I'm going to talk a little bit quieter. So it was hard to resist any classical guitar playing by Oldfield, because I find, uh, to me, Oldfield, timpani drums, classical guitars, things like that just are classic uh, Oldfield, and I love that stuff. So this is, I'm listening to this sort of like as if I only know Tubular Bells, and then this is his new album, and I just got it, and I'm listening to it. And uh, it doesn't grab me as much as Tubular Bells did. And I know from his own comments about it, he felt that it was a bit rushed. Whereas Super the Bell is probably, you know, he probably lived, breathed, and slept that song for months and months and months, whereas he had less time to put together this new album, and that's understandable. But despite all that, to me, it's still very classic old field sound, and I, I'd be pretty delighted for this sophomore release. Uh, it started off, there was almost like a fairground, you know, like a circus fairground kind of thing, I feel, a bit of a, that kind of sound. Uh, There's lots of guitar layering that was going on with electric guitars that sound like flutes, I thought it was pretty cool. Again, kind of a super unique twist on sound from Mike Oldfield. He just has a way of making a really unique kind of vibe and sound. So overall, I mean, it was very upbeat, very happy feeling. I felt good listening to it. There's like homey feeling. Uh, there's a little bit more jazziness to it than Tubular Bells, just in a couple parts in this part, side B, I'd say. Um, and it also much more complex, I would say, musically than, than Tubular Bells. One of the things I love about this album is hearing him play without Pro Tools. And I I've experienced both analog and digital recording. I know what Pro Tools is like. Think of it this way. Think of going to a hospital and smelling all the disinfectant, the bleach. That's what a lot of recordings sound like when they've been over-processed by Pro Tools. They have that bleach smell and suspiciously, sneakily perfect. And, you know, it, it's, it just... It just takes a life out of it listening to mike oldfield played all this stuff and it's very complex in those days too i mean they didn't have all the technology we do now for for large projects like he was doing all by himself mostly but uh, i just love the lack of pro tools i want to hear him playing I, I don't mind it i can tell they can hear the imperfections and timing when when apart and all i do is i just think of him i think of mike oldfield playing and he's probably thinking is it oh damn it i didn't get it quite right there but it's good enough right good enough for rock and roll that was what we used to say i thought it was a in ahead of its time actually it had a kind of industrial feel industrial music you know um in in that there's a big chunk in there so of course this is a second album and i would say is the complexity reflects that he's growing as a musician he has, his ideas are becoming more complex so basically that sums up my notes and i'm going to run out of a memory chip here so i better wrap up before i get uh erased and thanks for watching uh so stay tuned for that coming up it'll be official we'll have uh saturdays or sundays will be 70s day every week so we'll have 70s because i find i've been neglecting a bit some of the 70s and I, and I just love it. I mean, the 70s is the, it's the trunk, right? The tree is, the branches are all the new stuff that you have out now. And the, the trunk was that 1970s formational prog rock. So spiraling out, it's Dean talking to you later. See ya. Bye.